Hi there, everybody. Soaring Eagle here. Wanted to update you on my status and uh, what's been going on. You've uh, My posts uh, for day one, two, and three are up on YouTube. And so you can see I had, uh, had a really hell of an adventure. I uh, thought it was really neat. And um, uh, while it was really hard, really rough, really stressful, it's really uh, uh, rewarding to, um, to finish day three. The, uh, the problem is that uh, somewhere in uh, that adventure, uh, I messed my foot up, uh, and I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's, uh, it's somewhere between plantar fasciitis, a stone bruise, or a, uh, a deep ankle sprain. It's really hard for me to tell because the, uh, there are a lot of similarities in the pain. So I took a uh, zero uh, on day four of my adventure, and uh, I'm filming this on day five of my adventure and trying to really stay off of it right now and see if I can get it to feeling better. And then probably what I will do is hop ahead a little bit on the trail so that I can meet my uh, scheduled uh, uh, meeting in Damascus on March 15th. Um, it's not a big deal for me because I gotta come back to Roan, Tennessee anyway to uh, continue my flip-flop. So um, jumping ahead won't be a big problem and it will also allow me to pick some terrain that was um, a little bit more uh, knee and foot friendly uh, for a while, and I think that maybe that will help out. I'm not sure if I'm going out tomorrow or not. Uh, it's just really gonna be a day-to-day -day decision. Uh, right now, the medication and some of the uh, pain ointment that I put on my foot is making it feel a little bit better, and so I'm, I'm very hopeful. Uh, not really going to get into a rush to get out there. Just going to uh, make the decision um, as it uh, feels like it's right to do. Um, I can only injure it more. Um, but I did come to find out I'm not the only one out there that's uh, struggling with that. Uh, Night Train, who uh, stayed here at the uh, hostel with me, has uh, been uh, fighting through that. Uh, those who saw some of the, the videos from Jeep, uh, he went into the doctor, got it checked out. Unfortunately, he's going to be back on the trail. And that's all good to hear. Uh, Grumpy, unfortunately, had a really major one in that uh, uh, that was very unfortunate. Uh, so it's uh, it's part of the real life of, uh, of trying a through hike. You just do not know what your body can or cannot take uh, until you sometimes you get out there. So I thought I would review for you because I didn't really do a, uh, uh, a wrap up on each day. And the, really the reason for that is I was just dead tired. I had nothing on my mind but uh, uh, getting my uh, sleeping pad down and uh, sleeping bag and crawling into it. On uh, night one, when we got up to Roan Mountain, I literally got into my sleeping bag and laid there from uh, like 4.30 until 6 a.m. the next morning. Uh, the next night was a little bit better um, at uh, Over Mountain Shelter. Um, it was a little bit, uh, feel like I had a little bit more energy into it, but I still didn't spend a lot of time uh, because it was so late. Uh, so that was also a pretty quick night. And then when I got in here to uh, Mountain Harbor Hostel, which is really a great hostel, really recommend it. Dave and Shannon do a tremendous job of taking care of you. And, um, and some of the, I mean, absolutely the best breakfast. I'll show you uh, some of that uh, here in a few minutes. My lessons learned, the biggest lesson learned is that I have got to eat while I'm moving. I've got to eat sometime during the day. I think on day one, I may have had a half a bag of um, after breakfast, which I ate only a portion of my breakfast because uh, I was so anxious to get out there on the trail. And then throughout the day, I think I ate a half a bag of uh, peanut M&Ms, uh, peanut butter M&Ms and uh, some jerky. And that was pretty much it for the entire day. The next morning, um, I snacked a little bit, but I really didn't eat anything substantive and uh, uh, was really hurting uh, throughout the day for, uh, for not eating. And then the, the third day, which you'll see was the most challenging day that I think I've ever faced in my life, just about as far as weather and uh, any outdoor adventure. Uh, it was to a frightening point. And um, hopefully the, uh, the film will give you a, a, a feel for exactly what it was we were going through. But the, the gusts were 40 plus miles per hour, 25 mile hour winds, uh, chill factor down to 15. It's just, uh, it was brutal up there. And the, the climb without any wind, without any cold, 
is brutal in and of itself. So uh, anyway, had a chance to meet some of the through hikers that started back in Springer Mountain and uh, uh, Ope uh, um, uh, Night Train, uh, Blackbeard, uh, over the hill, over, over overnight. Uh, I'm going to mess that one up, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the basically the, the four horsemen with uh, Jeep uh, getting back on the trail here uh, here directly. Also had research here. She uh, jumped off the trail because of weather, uh, and of course you're going to see Attica, uh, one of the dogs uh, that uh, my first dog to meet on the trail, and uh, it's a lovable animal. So uh, that's been neat. I uh, was able to help them out with my truck being here. I was able to take them in, get them some food, get them resupply, and uh, and that. Uh, that in itself is a very, very pleasant experience, something I really enjoy doing. And so uh, we will see how it is. My buddy Rain Man uh, is out with research. They're slack packing back to Mountain Harbor to uh, get some miles in uh, while research decides what she wants to do uh, in order to get that one section that she missed from uh, uh, Carver's Gap over to 19E or back to Mountain Harbor. But anyway, they're at least getting some miles in, and Mark's getting, or Rain Man's getting some uh, some, expe some exper experience. So let me share with you uh, kind of what we did and uh, our thought process and why we did what we did. Uh, in October 2016, uh, Rain Man and myself, we did uh, some of the Rhone Highlands, and we ended up at Hughes Gap. And um, and so we decided that uh, um, at least Rain Man wanted to uh, go over Roan Mountain as, as part of that, since we didn't complete that. So uh, we decided to do that. And I really didn't think it'd be that bad to be able to go up Roan Mountain and, uh, and climb up to the top, stay at the highest shelter. And uh, so that's what we did the first day. It was about seven miles. Um, and the climb, uh, as you can see, was something uh, close to 2000 feet. So that was extremely uh, stressful and tiring. Uh, but, uh, it wasn't, it didn't really, uh, one of those really butt kickers, uh, but it definitely was a beast that uh, we were able to overcome. Uh, then we came down out of uh, uh, Roan Mountain here, uh, down into Carver's Gap, and uh, and then we went over the Balls, um, and uh, the uh, and ended up in the uh, Over Mountain Shelter, uh, right down here. And the Overmountain Shelter is a really neat shelter because it's where the uh, American Revolutionary Army used to uh, actually uh, uh, gather. Um, and it's, so it's a very historical and it's a beautiful site. And you'll see in day um, two and day three, the sites you get from, uh, from the shelter. Then out of that, we came into uh, to the, uh, the humps. So this is Little Hump. And in and of itself was intimidating, it was cold, and it was really hurting. And then uh, we ended up by going over uh, Big Hump or Hump Mountain. And that's almost two miles of a straight up climb. There are no switchbacks. And um, the wind was blowing 40 plus miles an hour. You'll see that I had to actually take some time to get behind rocks in order to try to warm my hands up and to get some rest and relief uh, from the hike. Uh, then we came out of Roan Mountain or out of the uh, Hump Mountain and had this huge descent uh, down into the gap which meant there was a lot of stepping uh, down onto uh, stones in the uh, switchbacks going all the way down. Uh, and then we got to, uh, to Mountain Harbor. And that's where we've been for the, uh, for the last two days. And Mountain Harbor is uh, really enjoyable. It's a, I think it's a, a, a very neat hostel. It's the only one I've ever stayed at, but I've always been impressed with them, uh, the way they keep the place up. Uh, and they're continuing to build upon it uh, even as we speak. And uh, it's got a beautiful uh, outdoor patio. It's got a, a nice uh, pot belly stove that you can use. I'll take you out here just a little bit and show you around. And so they have tinning sites that they allow folks to, to use. But it's got this beautiful creek that runs behind us here. And all oh, the man, the sun is out and it's feeling so nice and warm. I'm sure that uh, Rain Man is enjoying his hike. Uh, and so. And then the, uh, the main house is up there where they serve breakfast in the morning. And uh, Dave is a gourmet cook. He does a tremendous job on it. So uh, highly recommend it. Uh, still, like I said, I'll uh, figure out what I'm gonna do and uh, where we're gonna go from here. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. 
two days of zero, trying to get the pain out of my foot uh, before I uh, decide to get back on the trail. Anyway, thanks for following me in the journey, and we will get back with you. Hey, Pompa, do people take their dogs on the trail? If so, why don't you take Bo? Yes, Hannah, people do bring their dogs on the uh, Appalachian Trail, and uh, research brought Attica into the uh, hostel here with us. Been a great dog. Uh, mines a lot, uh, but uh, her, uh, the, his owner uh, has had some struggles in uh, taking him on the trail. She's been scared a couple of times. He's gotten cold. They get wet. Uh, some dogs are not made for long distance hiking. Attica's a very strong dog, but she worries about his weight being lost, uh, about weight loss. Um, and so she's been going back and forth as to whether or not she should continue, but uh, both of them need each other, and so uh, they decided to go ahead and uh, and uh, keep the dog with uh, with research right now. Um, some of the issues that I thought about as far as Bo is that Bo doesn't spend a lot of time in the outdoors, uh, you know, walking hours upon hours, and so that comes into play. He wasn't conditioned for it. Um, he likes to lay around and be lazy. I mean, he really does. Uh, so hiking eight to ten hours a day, uh, being around um, wildlife, animals, and whatnot. I also was concerned about ticks. Uh, getting on him and then uh, they'd be inverted getting on me because we're inside the tent. I worry about him getting wet and not being able to dry off and getting cold and shivers and then getting into uh, the tent and all my stuff getting wet because uh, he's trying to shake to get dry. So there's just a lot of things to come into play if you try to take a dog on the Appalachian Trail with you. So for that reason, I decided to let Bo stay home and uh, lay on the couch and, uh, and be Bo. This is, oh, this is fresh as a daisy, my friend. So first dinner with the Hiker Buds. Got research. Night time. Night train. Night train. <laughs> Captain Blackbeard. Rawr! Rawr, rawr. And my name is Overhill. 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 And don't forget Atticus. Atticus, absolutely. Opa's in the wall. Okay. Opa continues to stay up there. No, I'm coming down. Hiding away from everybody. I'm coming down. All right. All right, so this is a cool thing about... Uh, about hiking the Appalachian Trail. Family dinners. This is Attica hiking the Appalachian oh, Trail. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> On this side of Tennessee, David, so. Did they say that? Sore an eagle here. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. So you guys awesome. all have two names, and it gets a little confusing <laughs> because I'm like, I met you by so and so. It's wow. like truck drivers; they all have two names. <laughs> kind of like the same thing, isn't it